Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and last week we had a bunch of updates from Apple. We had iOS 16.1 released to the public, iOS 16.2 betas, and there's been a bunch of app updates since, and we haven't talked about that for a while. So there's a bunch of Apple and third-party app developer updates, and the first major one that I'm sure many of you are familiar with is YouTube. If we go to YouTube, you can see here's my channel. They've completely reworked the UI, updated all of the icons, and this is true in the YouTube Studio as well. Well, if we go to the videos page, you can see recently uploaded, you can go to popular, go to shorts, and this carries across to all channels now. So it's a major update. You can also zoom into videos. So if we turn this down here, just so it doesn't interrupt us, we'll go into my video about iOS 16 and you can just zoom in now. So if you want to zoom in, see some more detail on a specific part of the video, you can do that up to eight X. So it's great that they've added that that should be available to everyone now. Unfortunately, picture in picture is not available everywhere just yet, but either way, a full redesign is here and let me know if you see this or if you're not seeing it, I'd love to hear from you as well. Now, many people of course use WhatsApp around the world, and this has had a major update. We have the new communities feature. So if we go into WhatsApp, of course we have status, call, camera, chats, and settings, and the new communities feature is here and also has in chat polls. 32 people now are possible in a video call. And then also the maximum group size has been increased to 1024 up from 512. So all of those things have been updated within WhatsApp. So that's great if you use that, especially with groups and polls and things like that, communities should be very helpful. Now, as far as other apps, well, one we haven't visited in a long time is Edison Mail. And this is because they had some issues with privacy and security. They've since remedied that, and now they have a major update. So if we go into mail and one of the major things Edison is known for is managing subscriptions easily. If we go into subscriptions, they have an all new subscription manager with subscription insights as well. You can easily unsubscribe. You had that before, but now you can see how often you've opened it. You can see a summary. If we go here, you can set up a summary, see what you're already unsubscribed from. And of course, unsubscribe to something you don't want to have or add it to a summary of things you want to come in later. So they've added this to Edison mail. Of course, they have a bunch of other features as well to help pay for the app. There's premium versions of this now, since before they had some issues with privacy because of information. And now that's supposedly very secure and you can subscribe to different packages here and have different insights on things such as bills and receipts, refunds, entertainment deals, and more. Now, the next thing is Amazon music and within Amazon music. Now, if you're a prime subscriber, you have access to their full 100 million song library, but only through shuffle, not through direct play, unless you subscribe. So you have ad free podcasts, ad free music, but again, it's through the shuffle option, not directly through finding the song you want and playing it, but that's something they've updated. So if you want to use it as a radio, you definitely can do that. Now, of course, many of us already know this past week, Twitter was acquired by Elon. Elon Musk. And the other day he said that he would charge for the verification check mark. Now, hopefully they're still going to verify people and make sure it's legitimate, but it's hard to say, but it will be $8 a month. It seems so $8 a month, plus all of the Twitter blue benefits as well. So you'll have that the ability to edit tweets and more, and you can still use it for free, but Twitter blue, which you paid for before anyway, will go up from $5 to $8. If you want to have that verified check mark, we don't know all of the details with it. However, Vine may be making a return as well. Vine was an app that was acquired by Twitter some time ago and then gotten rid of for some reason. It seems like it would be very popular today with YouTube shorts and reels and TikTok, And I think it would be a smart idea to bring it back. And you'll see in his poll, it says, bring back Vine. 70% said yes out of 4.9 million votes. I think that would be a wise idea if they can monetize it for creators, bring back all of the old content. And I think that would be a great move. We'll have to wait and see what they do, but that was sort of ahead of its time and a true short form video. But let me know what you think of that in the comments below. This past week, many people were being banned or appeared suspended on Instagram. That should be fixed now as that was an actual outage or a problem they were having that's been resolved. They also announced yesterday that there'll be NFT updates very soon where you'll be able to create, buy and sell digital collectibles directly on Instagram.
You'll also be able to sell digital video collectibles and then paid subscriptions have already made their way to Instagram for different followers. So that's something I'm not so sure how that's going to go, but it should be available very soon. Now, Apple updated many of its apps this past week, all the way up till yesterday. And the first set of apps they updated were their iWork apps, Pages, Numbers, and Keynote, basically Word, PowerPoint, and Excel. However, the only one that's pretty much better is Keynote, but they got a major update with a lot of different things with an all new activity view. You can get notifications when others join if you're collaborating and much, much more. So these were all updated this past week to version 12.2. So if you haven't gotten those already, be sure to check for an update if you use those. Now, all of the updates I already mentioned on iOS, such as Keynote, Pages, and Numbers are available on Mac OS as well with new updates. So if we go into Numbers, we'll open it up here. I typically use Keynote or Pages, but you'll see new ways to share, latest activity, new functions, and more. So it's great that those have been updated. And one of the big updates this past week or a couple days ago was with GarageBand. So if we go into the app store, you'll see it was updated to version 10.4.7 and adds over 480 Apple loops and 18 drum kits for hip hop and electronic music production with new sound packets, beat tape and modular rhythms. And then of course, stability improvements and bug fixes. So it's great that they've updated this. This is available to anyone. It's a free app on Mac. If you have a Mac, there were also logic updates as well. Although I don't have logic installed on this device. If we look for logic here, you'll see logic pro with other updates here where it was recently updated. And if we click on more, you can see all of the different information about it, but I don't have the latest update because well, I don't have it installed, but again, this was updated as well. Now we also had a big update for final cut pro. Final Cut Pro, Motion and Compressor. Motion just got the smallest update. So if you use Apple Motion, that's a motion graphics program. And you can see here, this is Motion. Motion was updated with stability and performance improvements with version 5.6.3. But Final Cut Pro gets one of the biggest updates, at least on Mac OS Ventura and the latest Macs. So if we go into it, and you can see this is my video from iOS 16.0.3. Final Cut Pro has been updated to version 10.6.5, which now supports faster exporting of H.264 or HEVC on Macs with Apple Silicon. It also increases stability when disconnecting a sidecar display on Intel Macs. I've been using that with an iPad and it improves performance when editing on a Mac with an ambient light sensor. So if you're using a MacBook Pro with an ambient light sensor or a Mac Studio display like this, that should help as well. Compressor also gets major updates. So if we go into compressor, we'll open it here. Compressor also gets updated support for different types of encoding. And you'll see here, it says what's new in compressor. I haven't opened it since the update. It adds support for HEVC 8-bit 422 encoding. We'll hit continue and you can see some of the different versions I have here. And it also adds support for HEVC 422 encoding. It changes the default HEVC encoder type to faster and adds support for previewing the transparency of an HDR video if you're looking at the video here. It also fixes an issue where you may be unable to submit a batch when certain directories don't have read write permissions. That's if you're exporting multiple videos at once. So that's a great update for compressor should help if you need those additional video formats or it should just be faster in general. So it's great to always have speed improvements and performance improvements. Now, one of my favorite apps got a major update this past week as well. And that's Pixelmator. If we go into Pixelmator, and you'll see as soon as I open it up, since I haven't opened it since installing it on this Mac, it's Pixelmator Pro version 3.1. You'll see it says support for Mac OS 13. It's fully compatible, although it seemed to work fine before. And now as quick document opening, also AVIF support or AVIF support and corner radius improvements. And then you can learn more on their website about what's new here. Lots of different updates. It's something I use to create every thumbnail in the video, and they've increased a lot of different features over the time that I've actually had it. And I haven't had to pay for any of the upgrades. And within Pixelmator Pro, you can see here is an image I had, the one month later video for the iPhone 13 Pro. It's got my text here. It's also got a watermark on it here. And you can now create easy corner radius changes for individual corners. So if I want to make a rounded rectangle, just drag and drop. Let's change the gradient here. There's a rounded rectangle. If I want to change this radius here, you'll see it's changing all of them at once. However, if I click off, click onto this button here, I can change them individually. 
So let's get rid of that. And now I can change the radius of each corner individually. This is something you couldn't easily do before that's been added with this update. So a lot of nice little changes, it's constantly being improved. And that's why it's one of my favorite apps. Instead of paying for Photoshop monthly, I use this instead. Many of you have been asking me, where is iOS 16.2 beta two? Typically that's on a bi-weekly schedule with the early betas. So beta one to beta two, usually it will be week after week. So I wouldn't expect it until early next week. And the good thing is, is if you're in India, it will bring 5g support according to Apple to phones that support 5g as far as iPhones. However, the final release will be later on, probably in December, but look for that next week. Maybe we'll have an iOS 16.1.1 as well, and that should fix some issues people are having with Wi-Fi. We'll talk more about things like that and other updates and changes as well with iOS 16.2 and more this weekend. With the introduction of iOS 16.1, Matter is officially here. Matter accessories are now supported by iOS and many accessory makers today announced new products or support for Matter in the future. So it looks like one of them, Nanoleaf, is supporting it as well with a new smart bulb and light strip and many other manufacturers such as Eve that make in-air home quality monitors. I have one of those and many other manufacturers, including Amazon, although those will get iOS support later on, but it will be great once this is all a standard, everyone can use their accessories on iOS, Android, or anywhere else. And so that's everything for this past week with the major app updates. If you'd like to see more of these videos, let me know in the comments below. I haven't made it a weekly update because... Well, it's not that often that all the apps get updated, but once they have major updates, I do like to talk about it, but let me know what you think about these videos in the comments below. Now, of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.